Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 2x squared divided by x squared plus x plus 2. And we're going to be solving for all values of x. Now, notice that we can cross multiply this equation, you know, mul cross multiply and get a quartic from here and then we can solve it or we can do something else. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. My first method basically involves what I just said. We're going to brute force this, so let's go ahead and cross multiply. When you multiply x squared plus 2x plus 2 by x squared plus x plus 2, you're going, you're going to get a quartic and then we'll subtract to x squared. But one of the nice things about this equation is that the denominator can never be equal to 0 for real values of x. So we don't have to worry about making that undefined or any extraneous solutions here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, if you distribute this completely, you're going to get the following. x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 2x squared. And then let's go ahead and subtract x squared, I mean 2x squared. x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 6x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now this quartic may not make much sense to you, and I don't think you want to use the quartic formula because that's pretty complicated. Even the cubic formula is pretty complicated. But anyways, one thing that I'd like you to uh, notice here is the following. Let's go ahead and first of all uh, replace, um, or not replace, but write the coefficient of x to the fourth as 1. And then notice that 1 plus 4 plus 4, which is 9, is equal to 3 plus 6. That basically means that the sum of the Coefficients of odd powers of x equals the sum of the coefficients of the even powers of x, which implies that x equals negative 1 is a solution, which implies x plus 1 is a factor. So that's kind of nice, right? Since we know that x plus 1 is a factor, we can just go ahead and divide this polynomial, I mean this one, not this one, uh, by x plus 1, or manipulate the terms, which is something that I often use, so I'm going to write it as x to the fourth plus x cubed so that it contains x plus 1 as a factor. But then I have to break down the 3x cubed, so on and so forth. I'll keep doing this. So then I have to add 3x, 2x cubed to make 3. And then this must be followed by 2x squared, which must be followed by another 2x squared, which must be followed by 2x, which must be followed by 4x plus 4. And that brings us to the end of this manipulation. Now, uh, we can go ahead and uh, factor this by grouping, and we should be getting something like this. x cubed times x plus 1, plus 2x squared times x plus 1, and then 2x times x plus 1, and 4 times x plus 1, which confirms the fact that x plus 1 is a factor. Now, we can go ahead and take out x plus 1, and then we're going to end up with a cubic. And you might be asking, we still have a cubic to solve, but guess what? This cubic is really fun to solve because it is factorable. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is factorable. It turns out to be factorable. So how do you factor it? You can just go ahead and notice that these two, two terms have a common factor and these two terms have a common factor and those uh, one of the common factors happen to be the same thing. So now we get x squared multiplied by x plus 2 plus 2 times x plus 2. So x plus 2 is a common factor, and we can go ahead and take it out, and we end up with a really nice result. So here we can write it as x plus 2 multiplied by x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, this means that uh, we have three factors. We can set each one equal to 0 and find the solutions. Let's go ahead and do that now. And then after this, we're going to use the second method. But second method is almost all the time awesome. All right, great. So let's go ahead and solve this. And we can basically say, hey, x plus 1 equals 0 implies x equals negative 1. I know some folks are going to be mad because I'm writing obvious steps. But, you know, someone might need this step. So that's why I'm including that here. Anyways, x equals 1, negative 1, and negative 2 are the real solutions. But x squared plus 2 equals 0 is not going to give us real solutions. The solution is going to be non-real. 
or you can call them complex if you want. And from here, we get x squared equals negative 2. If you square it both sides, you're going to get square root of 2 times i, plus minus, so on and so forth. So that's going to be the solutions. So we end up with, you know, three solutions here. Well, I should say four, I guess, right? That's the plus minus gives us two. And it's a cortex, so it makes sense. It has four solutions. Awesome. And obviously, at the end, we're also going to be looking at the graph of something. And that is going to be fun as well. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do the second method now. Our second method is uh, involves a really cool sub, as I mentioned in the community post. So let's rewrite our equation, x squared plus 2x plus 2, multiply by x squared plus x plus 2 equals 2x squared. This is where we, uh, where we are after cross multiplying, but we didn't distribute. Make sense? Now, one thing that I want you to notice, obviously, for these kinds of equations, because we can typify them, which means they're a certain type, and these constants are the same. Awesome. And not only that, you have a product of two quadratics that have the same constant, but also you have x squared on the right-hand side, which is kind of nice. Now, this allows us to manipulate the equation in the following way. I'm going to go ahead and divide this by x and divide the other one by x, which is the same thing as dividing both sides by x squared, and we end up with a constant on the right-hand side. That's why it's important to have a quadratic or just x squared on the right-hand side, and also it's important to have the same constant. Why? Because you'll see in a little bit. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and divide by x. Obviously, uh, you know, x equals 0, x equals 0 is not a solution, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so if you go ahead and separate this, uh, x plus 2 plus 2 over x multiplied by x plus 1 plus 2 over x. And this is where the awesome sub comes in. Yes, if you said x plus 2 over x will be replaced with something, you got it right. So suppose x plus 2 over x is equal to, hmm, let's see which variable we should use, y, and don't question y. This gives us y plus 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 2. So it's not only that we're using the constant 2 here, but also the constant we get from here is going to cancel out. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. So much awesomeness. So y squared plus 3y plus 2 equals 2. I'm not trying to brag, by the way, like about this when I say this awesomeness. I'm just saying, restating the fact that this solution method is really cool. And I'm not the one who invented it. So, you know, I can't really own it. But anyways... Uh, so 2 cancels out, and we get a really nice quadratic. Like, this is awesome, isn't it? And from here, we get two solutions, y equals 0. Let's see where y equals 0 takes us, because we have x plus 2 over x. Okay, great. Equals 0. And obviously, this is going to give us the complex solutions, because this ends up being x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. And as you know, the results are the same. What happens if y is equal to negative 3? Well, I could probably write it again in case you haven't seen the first method or you came in later, whatever. The answer, the solutions are going to be plus minus uh, square root of phi from here. The negative 3 is going to give us x plus 2 over x is equal to negative 3. Multiply everything by x. You know, don't make a common denominator. And put everything on the same side. This is kind of funny because it kind of gives us the same <laughs> equation that we got, but with the y. This time it's with the x. And from here we get, obviously, x plus 1 and x plus 2 as factors, and negative 1 and negative 2 as solutions. And basically, uh, this gives us pretty much the same, not pretty much, but exactly the same thing that we received with this first method, obviously, because we're solving the same equation. But let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and see what this looks like in the coordinate plane. Well. Here we go. I graphed uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. One of them is a parabola. This guy is a parabola here. As you can see, that's like a U-shape. And the second one is a rational function, which has an x-intercept at 0, 0. Uh, you know, uh, there are no, uh, what is it called? X a <laughs> vertical asymptotes, but there's a horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. You don't see the full picture, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, anyways, they intersect at two points, negative 2, comma 2, and negative 1, comma 1. That's it, because the other solutions are complex. Awesome. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.